Hey everyone, you're listening to an Acts Church Sermon. If you have not heard of us before, you can check us out at www.actscamus.org or come check us out on a Sunday. All right, here is the sermon. We hope God blesses you through it. This morning, I will not be preaching. Don't cheer. Um, we have we have a special someone this morning, a uh, friend of, of the church for a long time, uh, Isaac Smith. Some of you have met him before. Some of you have not. Isaac has been a pastor for many years and was the superintendent for the Northwest District of Wesleyan Churches that eventually became the position that his son, Wes, who some of you have heard preach here before, uh, took over. And Isaac is now starting a, a cowboy church where they will literally be doing things like roping and, and barrel races, whatever that is. I don't, barrels don't move, so I don't know how that works, but um, it sounds like my kind of a race. Just sit there. Um, so anyway, all that kind of stuff and trap shooting and all out in Wyoming, uh, South Dakota border. Uh, he's about to do that. I, he's, he's done many things. He's, he's a great guy. One of the more interesting, he was a swimsuit model. We have some pictures. No, I'm kidding. He was. And come on up, Isaac. Uh, Isaac's going to share with us this morning from the word. And I, if you guys could give him a round of applause and just a hand to welcome him to Axe Church this morning. Thanks, David. Well, thank you. I retired from the modeling gig some time back. Good to see you this morning. Good to worship with you. It's great to partner with you and good to be together. Amen? Amen. Let's jump right in. Let me just say this. If you've ever been to church over twice or visited a website, you've heard words like, come on in, gather, attend, show up. You've heard words like connect, engage. Some churches put those on paper and put them in the seats. You've heard words like groups, community, be a part, show up. Uh, you hearing these words? Yes. Attend. You, you hear words like community. If you hang around long enough, you'll hear maybe the word fellowship, which is what Christians say when they're hanging out. And you, you, all of these are good words. Yes. I'm not denigrating these words. Please, please understand that. Many of them are biblical words and or biblical concepts. What I want to contend for this morning is they're just halfway. Let's talk about that a little bit. They're they're absolutely meaningful. They're they're engaging. Now, let's acknowledge that some of these words are sort of comfort food words, right? Oh, I like comfort food. (laughs) But some of them, they, 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 they feel warm. They're inviting. They're welcoming. And wow, do we need that. Let me just illustrate that. In the 1980s, there was a survey given, and one of the questions asked was, how many close friends do you have? And the definition was, a close friend is someone that you trust fully, with whom you can share your deepest joys, your deepest passions, your deepest hurts, someone that you really can trust. How many close friends do you have? And in the 1980s, the most common answer back was five. That was the most common number given. In 2017, that same survey was given with that same question and that same definition, and the most common number back was zero. Not a zilch. That's really sad, isn't it? In a day when many of us carry devices around on us with which we can connect with a gazillion people in about three strokes, we're lonely. Maybe we're more lonely than we've ever been in the history of the human race. It's possible. Wow. So the words I'm just talking about are important words, and it's important for a church to have that connection point. But, but what I want to say to you is that in churches, let me, let me say it this way, in churches you hear so much, everybody come in, we, we very seldom hear, hey guys, get out of here now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ultimately churched. I've been doing church for 150 years, <laughs> give or take a couple. And I don't really, don't really remember hearing that much about, get out of here and go do something. I mean, we say it nicer than that, right? Let, let, me, let me go biblical on you, and it's, it's way, way nicer than that. Jesus, we're going to have a scripture up on, I think, John 20, 21. Jesus is saying, I, I'm peace be with you, but, but catch this, as the Father has sent Key on that word. 
sent me, so I'm sending you. In the Gospel of John, the fourth book of the New Testament, over 40 times Jesus says, I was sent. Hello. See, understand, this whole come, gather, attend, join, community, connect, fellowship, those are important words, but it's just halfway there. Jesus says, I was sent, I'm sending you. Please understand this, God is a sending God. God the Father sent the Son. Jesus, we just read it. I was sent by the Father. God the Father sent the Son. We read in Scripture, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Oh, wow, I love that passage. I think it's God's mission statement. So God was sent his Son into the world. Jesus, while he was here, as, as, as you know, connected with a few people, connected with his 12 disciples quite quite closely, and he's giving them a heads up on his death and resurrection, and he's saying to them, in a little while, we're, I'm going to go through this suffering, this death, and I will leave you, I'll be taken away, but he says, don't be so upset, because he says, I am sending, hear that word? I am sending you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he will be in you. He will teach you all things concerning me. In fact, Jesus says, it's better that I go away because I've been with you. He'll be in you, and he'll always be there. He'll guide you about me. He'll guide you into all truth. He will purify you. He will empower you. In fact, Jesus says, greater works than you've seen me do will you do. Is there ever a time in Scripture when you go, huh, really? You're Jesus. And you're telling us we're going to do greater stuff than you do? Let, let, let's acknowledge this. In the book of Acts, you, you have this group of 120 committed disciples. Jesus had earthly ministry of about three years, had a, had, a, had a committed group of followers of about 120. Now we have a few billion. And Jesus said, let's do this. In fact, Let's watch that. Let's watch the commands of God. We're, we're going we're to head to a scripture that we'll look at more closely here in a minute, but, but let's watch this pattern of God. In Genesis, when God is, is this story, this wonderful, beautiful account of God's creation, when God's, the first recorded command we have to human beings is be fruitful and multiply. Notice that's not an either or command, it's a both and command. Got that? It wasn't either be fruitful or multiply. Pick one. No, no, no. It's be fruitful and multiply. So let me just do shorthand for this. Make babies, teach your babies to make babies. <laughs> On a macro scale in the human race, we've done that pretty well. Right? So, so fast forward to the New Testament, and Jesus is putting together this cadre, this core of, of disciples, and he says, come, follow me and be fishers of men. Hmm. Interesting. Again, not an either or command or call, but a both and. Not, you have your pick. You can either follow me or you can become a fisher of men. You can become one of those who gathers in. You can, you can go pass out stuff in Camus. You, 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 one, one, you, you can't, it's not like, well, you pick whether you're going to be a follower of mine or a fisher of men. See, here's the contention I would say that in, in modern day Christianity, sometimes in what we call a discipleship journey, we take people precisely halfway. We get them in, we don't send them out. We bring them in, we connect them, we, they, they learn community, they learn knowledge. All of these are good things, hello? And then we go full stop. Now you're in, you're all connected, you feel warm and embraced, you're knowledgeable, you can play Bible trivia with the best of them. But you don't get sent. So I want to focus obviously today on the fact that God is ascending God and he sends us. Remember, Jesus in the Gospel of John says 40 times, I was sent. And then he says, so I'm sending you. So I want to ask three big questions this morning, and, and, and we're going to go to Scripture here in just a moment, and we'll get the macro answer to that. 
So the third big question is, how are, how are you sent? Where are you sent? To whom are you sent? Well, let's start with the how, and let me just say, this is going to be for all Christ followers. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, verses 18 and 20, and it's going to be on screen for you, and I'm going to ask you in just a minute or two here to read out loud with me. Emphasis on the word loud. Got it? So, so sort of stretch out your vocal cords a little bit here and get ready to rock and roll. We're, we're, we're going to read out loud a little bit. But, but here's the deal I would say. This is the, called the Great Commission. This is right before Jesus is going back into heaven, and he's saying to his assembled disciples, this is really what I'm going to do for you. So this is the macro scale, and when we ask the how, I'll get more specific here in a minute, but each of us should fit under this umbrella. Each of us should fit under this macro scale of this is how God is sending me, how God is sending us. So you ready? Let's read it out loud together. Here we go. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and oh, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, we're going to pull that up. I think it's all going to be on the screen, the whole, the whole passage we just read, so it's, you have to squint a little. But it's going to be up there. And I want to read you something from John Stott regarding this great commission. He says this, Jesus' authority on earth allows us to dare to go to all the nations. His authority in heaven gives us our only hope of success. And his presence with us leaves us no other choice. Wow. You see, this is the macro scale that I think each of us, every Christ follower, falls into. That we are to understand the authority of God, both on heaven and earth. And then the key, one of the key words here is this strong verb, go. I want you to go. I want you to get out of here. I want you to get moving. I want you to go. I want you to go and make disciples of all nations. A disciple for, for this term, let's just use the simplest of terms, is a follower. You're a follower. I want you to go make other followers. Have other Christ followers. Make disciples of all nations. Then baptizing them, which is this inclusion into the family of God, baptizing them in the triune name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the sending God. I want you to baptize them. I want you to teach them to obey all that I've commanded, including go make disciples. I commanded that. So teach them to obey that. And I want you to be aware that you're not alone. This is really not even your idea. And I'm with you, oh wow. So let's ask these questions specifically. How are you called? It's often, and you may have taken surveys and tests and had gone through teaching, that we talk about how has God gifted you, wired you? What talents has God given to you? What learning has God given to you? What opportunities has God given to you? What uh, passions does God give to you? What skills does God give to you? What do wise people say to you? You should do more of that. What do you feel affirmed in doing? How's the peace of your soul, the peace of God in your soul, saying, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. How do all, all of those, none of those things are precisely identical, but all of them overlap, and you start to find a sweet spot of saying, this is how God is sending me. You connecting with that? Now, let me just tell you this. Like, I'm really old. Like, I have rocks on my place that are younger than me. So let me just tell you something about that. How God is sending me now is different than how he sent me when I was 25, or 35, or 45, or 55, or I'm going to stop. You, 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 get, you get the idea, right? 
How is God sending you? Look at, look at that big picture. Again, the Great Commission, I think, is that macro picture for each one of us. Somewhere in this, you and I fit into that. I, how God is sending you and how God is sending me is going to be specifically different, but all of us fit in under this, that we are part of this God sending, his commissioning to us. But then how has he wired you? How has he put you together? How has God sent you? And how is he sending you now? Right where you are now. Here's what, I, here's what I've come to believe about God. That, that he has a specific purpose for me now, and he's also layered. He's getting me ready for something later. Pastor David mentioned a little bit ago that, that we're, I'm getting ready to plant a church. I did not have that in my plan. I was on this wonderful, nice glide path toward retirement. I'd done this succession thing, and, and, and it worked out just according to script, and I was really happy with it, and, and it was great, and I can see it out there. I can see it out there. And then, you know, uh, he mentioned my, my son's a new DS now, and he came back and said, no, you know, I don't think so. I think you need to do this. I said, no, I, I said that's nuts. Who does that? You don't take somebody as old as I am and go plant a church. That, that's, who does that? He said, well, you're not normal. And, yeah. and, and, and I'm not sure that's totally a compliment, see. But, but see, that's, we've come to believe, Esther and I have come to believe, that's how God's sending us now. Does that make sense to you? You understand, God messes up your plans sometimes. But God is always in the sending business. So here's, here's what I'm confident about now. Even, even at, you know, being 150... Um, whatever this next step is, I'm guessing God's getting me ready for something later, right? I mean, the book of Ephesians says to us that in the ages to come, he might demonstrate it the exceeding riches of his grace and his glory. Thus, What's that all about? Wow, that's going to be awesome. So please understand, you haven't arrived. You're still being sent. Uh, so how, how are you being sent? Ask God to give you direction in that. Some of you already know that. You just need to say yes to that. Hello. Let's ask the second one. Where are you being sent? Where are you being sent? This is Acts Church. I love that name. I love the book of Acts, one of my very favorite books in the Bible. And, and understand the, the chronology of Acts. As, as you know, in Acts chapter 1, they're gathered, they're huddled, 120 of them in this upper room, and they're waiting. And Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes on them, and, and just just they just explode with his power and his grace and his mission and they burst out of the room and Acts chapter 2 is unbelievably awesome and, and many of us would say wow that's just sort of the ideal church Acts chapter 2 for their first day out they have 3,000 conversions and 3,000 baptisms by the way David if, if you do that and need help call me I'll drop what I'm doing and come and help you baptize I, I, it's just, I'd love to be part of a day like that right? It'd be, it'd be unbelievably amazing. And then, and then you go through, and the Lord was adding daily to their number those who were being saved. They were meeting in house to house community fellowship groups. They were communing. They were they were listening to the teaching of the apostles and prophets. They were giving. They were serving. They were sharing. They were doing. Uh, they, they were being the Acts Church is absolutely phenomenal, fantastic. Uh, we we think right right away about five thousand men, and and historians would say not very far into that, two three years into that, there were over ten thousand. It's the world's first mega church, and. And uh, maybe a third of the population of Jerusalem at that time is amazing. It's awesome. Here's the deal. If that's what they would have done and stayed right there in Jerusalem, the odds are extraordinarily high. You and I would never even have heard about that church. And we wouldn't be meeting here today. And many of us would believe that God allowed persecution to come to them to kick them out of the nest. And one of my favorite Bible lines is they went everywhere preaching Jesus. They hadn't planned this. They were just trying to stay out of jail and alive. But when they went, they went preaching Jesus and the gospel began to spread. The message of Jesus began to spread. And then you had churches like Antioch that became ascending church, etc. And the message of the gospel began to spread. So in that generation, they touched almost all the known world of their day. Wow. And you and I are meeting here today in the name of Jesus Christ with Acts Church. How about that? See, but you run into Acts chapter 6 and 7 and you, you bump into the words multiply. And they got scattered. They got sent. They got spread. And that's how they started multiplying. Huh. See, 
Ask that question again. Where are you sent? So it could be to Uganda. I don't know. The odds are not high that it's Uganda. But it could be that God may be sending you. Here's one thing I do know this. Is where you are right now, that's where you're sent. See, my parents thought I was an oops. It gets funnier. I have a brother who's 13 years younger than me. <laughs> I remind him of this every once in a while. Say, if I was an oops, you were a, oh my goodness, what in the world, how could this have happened? I remember those conversations. <laughs> my parents, who are otherwise pretty bright people, thought we were accidents. But they're wrong. We were not accidents. Well, my brother maybe. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm on purpose, and he's on purpose. God says, before you were knit together in your mother's womb, I knew all about you, and I loved you, and I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. I knew all about you before every, anybody else knew anything about you. I knew all about you, God says. You're not an accident. Please understand that about yourself. You are on purpose. Your set of experiences, I would believe that not all of them have been caused by God, but all of them are known by God and woven into the fabric of who you are and who God planned you to be. And ordained, it is ordained of God that you are who you are, where you are, when you are. You are not an accident. You are on purpose. Please hear that. And so the fact of it is, say, how am I sent? Where am I sent? That may be somewhere different down the road, but where am I sent right now is where I am. God has me here. Let's ask that last question. To whom are you sent? Who's God sending you to? Where? where, where? Not just how's God sending you. That's kind of how you're wired and put together and gifted. Not just where, that's where, that's a place, but, but to whom? Who are those people that God's intersecting you with? Think about that. Let me tell you a story. A number of years ago, Esther and I felt called to leave a, a, a quite large thriving ministry to go to a, a pastor a church, sort of a rescue restart operation. This, this little church had been beat up and run over and, and was about to close. And in fact, they just said, if you guys don't come, we're, we're just going to close. <laughs> That's encouraging. And, and so we believed that we should do that, and we went to go pastor this church, and God, God did amazing things there. And, and but what that meant is that they couldn't pay us a, a, a livable salary, and so I needed to get another job to pay for this. And so I was doing that and looked around a bit and tried two or three things. Anyway, I settled on, there was a small manufacturing company, about 40 employees, and uh, they, they, did, they needed a lot of metal work, and I had uh, some background in metal fab. And so I got a, a job there with them, and it was fascinating. Some of, them, some of them learned that I was a pastor, and oh boy, they weren't too happy about actually working with a pastor. Uh, uh, so it was a challenge a bit, but I, I went to work there, and on my first day on the job, of course, you want to make sure you're a little early, and head to the old time time clock, you know, and you pull a sheet of paper out, and you go, cha and uh, so my first day on the job, I went in and pulled my paper out, and went, cha and a, a guy who was a few years older than me at the time uh, did the same thing, and I'm trying, you know, I'm a new guy, I'm trying to be nice and friendly, right, and so I just said, good morning. Now, give me some feedback. Did that sound reasonably friendly? It's about the best I got, so I'm hoping. And he barely made eye contact, sort of sideways eye contact, and said in a grumpy voice, yeah, what's good about it? Now, I've got to tell you, if that's your line, please get some new material. Because <laughs> that's really old. It wasn't good to start with. And, and then he went off and I watched it. He goes way, way down to the end of the line to his workstation way down there. <laughs> and I think, well, we're off to a good start. Yeah, first day on the job. Later on, the guy that I was sort of paired up with uh, for, for quite a while, and uh, he said to me sort of mid-morning, he said, I, 
I see you had, you had a conversation with, and I'm going to hold this guy's name. I'll just use the name David. <laughs> he said I, said, I see you had a conversation with David. And I said, well, I wouldn't exactly call it a conversation. He said, that's the most you'll ever get out of him. Hmm. He said, he's the quintessential grumpy old man. He said, uh, we assume that he's had some major tragedy or whatever in his life, but we don't know because he won't talk to anybody about anything. He will give you a few grunts, but unless it's absolutely necessary for job-related something, he'll never say another word to you as long as you're here. He is grumpy, and then he used this phrase, he just wants to be left alone. Now, I would love to tell you that I'm such a warm and generous person that my first reaction to hearing that was, oh, I can't let that happen. <laughs> I'm just not that good. My first response was, I can do that. <laughs> I got a full life. I have a full plate. I know lots of people. He wants to be left alone. Yeah, good with me. Has God ever messed you up? <laughs> Seriously, has, has he ever messed with your life? Well, he has with mine lots. And, and, and so I hear that, I feel this sort of like God's thumb in my back and a whisper somewhere back in here, God saying, no, 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 you can't do that. Really? So what you're going to do is you're going to engage with this guy and what you're going to do is you're going to open the door a bit and help him to see some of my love. Now, see, it's my first day on the job, a steep learning curve. I've got all kinds of things happening, and I'm having this conversation with God, right? And, and, and I say back to God, <laughs> really? That's, that sounds like a lot of heavy lifting to me. Did you hear this guy? And it's almost like you could hear God clearing his throat. <clears throat> Who does the heavy lifting? Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good thought, yeah. Yeah, you do the heavy lifting, yeah. God said, Here, here's the deal. You just have to be intentional about this and engage with this guy. I'll help you out. All right. I'll give it a shot. So I did. So I'd try. I would, I would uh, I'd say hi to him I, 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 in a friendly manner, and I never got like a glance, a word, a shift in body posture, any recognition that I existed on the planet, just nothing. Hm. Wow. Okay. This will be tougher. So I stepped up my game, and... and uh, I made more intentionality about trying to connect with him. Again, nothing. I'd go by his workstation, and I would uh, I'd stop and just say good morning, and I'd tell him a little joke. And believe it or not, I can be funny if I try. I've got a repertoire. And I got nothing. No grin, no smile, no shift of the shoulders, no recognition that I was alive. Nothing. <laughs> well, boy, this is, this is tough. I mean, I'm bringing out some of my best material, and I get nothing out of this guy. I keep praying about it. God, open the door. So fast forward, it's, it's three months now. I'm, I'm making no headway. And then the, the, the company has a new project, and they asked me to sort of spearhead it, and, and um, it involves several stations and steps, and I, one of those would be what he did, his specific station and skill set. And so I would have to take this project to him and discuss it with him. You hearing that? Like words. <laughs> Discuss it with him and get his input on what he could do, etc. And I knew I got an opening. Can't blow this. Because the guy is actually going to probably have to look at me. And he's probably going to have to say real words. I might even get a whole sentence. Um, I, can't, I can't waste this opportunity. So I, I, I ambushed him. I'll just totally acknowledge that. So I took this project to him and, and talked to him about what he would do and what he needed, how he needed it to come to him, et cetera. And sure enough, he had to. He gets paid to do this. And so he said as few words as possible, but words. And we actually had a bit of a discussion for, you know, just a little bit. And I had an ambush at a certain time. I had this one-liner that was unbelievably funny. And I just zapped him with it. And, and watch this. Here, here's what I got. I got a... I got a half smile, and then a... Oh, I can't believe I just did that. And I'm going away, yes! I got a whole half smile. Wow, amazing. So... So an hour or so later, we have, a, we have a break, and we had a row of long tables, and he usually sat way down there on the end, 
You know, everybody get your own spot. And when I sat down, there he was right across from me just doing this. <laughs> I thought, well, this will be interesting. He said, you think you're something, don't you? I said, yes, I think I'm amazing. I mean, you're tough, man. You're really tough. And I got a whole half smile out of you. Yes, I think I'm an all-star. I'm like really good. And then he said to me, why do you care? Oh, he said, that's a great question. So here's the deal, why I care. So I, I'm a follower of Jesus. And Jesus gives me such amazing joy. Like lots of joy. I, my life has ups and downs too. But Jesus just gives me so much of his love and his joy. Sometimes I just can't handle it. I mean, it's just like overflows. And I, I observe you and would say, I don't think you've got a lot of that. And I just think that's unbearable. I think I just need to, I've got extra. So I just thought I'd like to share some of that joy with you. So I got this real eloquent response. Hmm. And he goes back down to his end of the table. And I'm saying to God, gave it a shot. But God does the heavy lifting. You know that, right? So I kept going by. And now he'd actually like look up at me most of the time. Not ahead. I kept the little jokes up. And every once in a while he'd smile while he's shaking his head like I can't believe I'm laughing at this idiot. <laughs> but... but I noticed that instead of trying to look away from me, he was actually trying to look toward me. And every once in a while, we'd have a short conversation. I would get a paragraph or two even out of him. And then one day he said to me, he was telling me, I mean, he went on for a while about something in his life that was pretty difficult. And I said, uh, would you like for me to pray about that? He said, well, not now. I said, I'm not going to embarrass you now. Uh, don't have as, quite as much courage. Uh, um, but I said, but when I'm praying, would you? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I'd be good if you'd do that. Now, now, I would love to tell you that today he's a missionary in China. <laughs> but this is just not that good a story. But I was sent to him. There were other things that was going on. But, but understand, I was sent to him. So let me ask you this. What I've been telling this, you, you, you've been thinking of a grumpy old man you know? How about a grumpy old woman? I've seen kids that were pretty grumpy. This is not an age issue. You, you with me? Could be instead of whining about that, maybe you ought to acknowledge that you're sent. How about that? Now see, you can be sent to nice people too, right? But that's so easy, I don't even need to talk about it. Being sent to nice people is a piece of cake. Being sent to difficult people, hello? So I'm just going to ask you to consider that. How am I sent? Where am I sent? God's word says to us, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. God's saying to us, in this his word, you are sent sent. It's incredibly important that we gather. It's incredibly important that we connect. It's incredibly important that we learn and grow. I'm not denigrating any of that. But it isn't enough. You're just halfway there. We need to be sent. I want to pray for you. But here's the deal. I'd, I'm quite okay if you tune me out and you just have a conversation with God. Some of you already know how you're sent, where you're sent, and to whom you're sent. <laughs> and you just need to say, all right, I'll do it. Some of you don't know yet and need to say, God, would you clarify that for me? Help me know really how I'm sent, where I'm sent, to whom I'm sent. And one of my prayers is, that could be different every day, that last one for me. Who is it that God's going to run into me? And I need to be alert enough to say, oh, I'm sent to her. I'm sent to him. Let's pray. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, thanks for sending 
Christ Jesus into the world. Thanks for sending the Holy Spirit in us to empower us and guide us and teach us. Thanks for sending us. Now, Father, help us to figure that out and say, yes, Lord, I'll go where you're sending. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's people agreed and said, Amen. amen. Thanks, guys, for listening. Well, thanks for listening to that Acts Church sermon. We hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, we'd love it if you would comment or uh, give us a review or give the track a like. Uh, It really means a lot to us to hear back from people who have um, heard these sermons and have been impacted by it. So share your story with us. Share what is happening in your life um, that this is speaking into. And remember, you can subscribe to our iTunes podcast or through SoundCloud so that you can get all of our releases as soon as they come out. Thanks again for listening, and we'll be back with more next week.